So let's minimize our CLI and head on over to our distributed switch here called switch. So if we right click on our switch here and click add host. So here we'll select our host and I'm going to select VM NIC1 which is actually a dedicated NIC for vMotion and then on the right hand side here at uplink port group I'm going to drop this down and select VMware uplinks. So VMware uplinks is the physical port profile that we created on the Nexus switch and this here is the correlation between the physical NIC VM NIC1 and our VMware uplinks port profile. So I'll click next now and in network connectivity we're just looking at VMK1 for this which has got IP address for vMotion and we're going to migrate that network to our vMotion port profile and we'll click next here. Now we don't have any virtual machines on that vMotion network obviously so I won't click this on this screen but when we come back to do our management network and servers network we'll be clicking that and we can migrate our Nexus 1000 V switch across. So here I'm going to click next and it gives a bit of a summary here and a graphical representation of the vMotion port that's going to migrate across. So this is your Nexus switch and on the right hand side you can see the physical uplink port profile our VMware-uplinks and our host name here VMESXI with VM NIC1. So now I'm going to click finish and we should see the migration begin. I'll just expand this window and it uses VMware Update Manager to go through and install the Nexus module onto the host. So the Nexus module is the VEM module, V-E-M, which is a vir virtual Ethernet module. And the virtual Ethernet module works as an extension of the Nexus 1000V. So later on we can go into the CLI and we can see all our virtual Ethernet modules that have been connected. The installation is now being completed. We've got green ticks down in the recent tasks area. And if we click on vMotion here and ports, we can see that we have one connected port with VM ESXi1 using VMK1 with VMK VM kernel port with the IP address for vMotion. So next up we're going to go through and we'll be doing our storage network. So the same thing, we're going to come back to switch. We're going to right click and click on manage host this time. We'll click on our VMESXI1 and we'll click next. And my VMNIC2 on vSwitch2 is my dedicated storage NIC. So I'm going to be migrating that one this time. So I'll click that. And for the uplink port group, we're going to be placing this also in VMware uplinks. And let's click next. So for vSwitch2, we can see that we're on the storage network in our traditional vSwitch2 network. And we want to migrate that across to storage on the Nexus switch. And now we'll click next. There's no virtual machines on this network, so I'm not going to be selecting migrate virtual machine networking again. And we'll click next. And as you can see here, the VM kernel port and IP address will be entered here under the storage network and our adapter VM NIC2 on VM ESXi1 will be added into VMware uplinks port profile. So I'll click finish. And if we just go back to our hosts and clusters, you can see that our Nexus 1000V is still up and running. Our host is here. If we go to storage, we can see our NFS data store is still up. I can right click, browse. So we're actually using the switching on the Nexus 1000V now. And we'll click close. We'll jump back into networking. Now on this screen, we'll right click, manage hosts. Select the host, VMESXI1, click next. We'll just use these two adapters for now and we'll click next. For the management network, so we want to migrate this across to management port profile and we'll click next. And on this screen, we'll tick migrate virtual machine networking and we'll migrate our two virtual machines across to our servers network or port profile. Let's click on next. There's a summary screen of what's going to happen, highlighted in yellow, and we'll begin the migration. Let's click finish. And the migration is complete. If we expand our management network here 
on the Cisco Nexus 1000V, we can see that it's brought across our management IP address of, of 192.168.1.102. We can see we've got two virtual machines running here, the Cisco Nexus 1000V primary and also our Windows 2008 Web 1 virtual server, which is powered off. If I scroll down a little bit further, we can see the storage VM kernel port and IP address 192.168.2.113 and our vMotion 192.168.1.112. So I'm only going to leave two physical adapters connected onto this server and use it as a port channel. The third adapter I'll probably just disable on the host. And the next bit that we're going to look at now is configuring a secondary Cisco Nexus 1000V switch. And this will work hand in hand with the primary. So if one goes down, the other one takes over and there will be no drop of packets in your network in the event of a failure or even just for a maintenance window.